From Davos, Switzerland, I'm here with Albert Borla. He's the CEO of Pfizer. It's good to see you. Good to see you, Sarah. We have a lot to talk about here. You know, here we are three, three years later in Davos from when we first started 2020 talking about the coronavirus popping up in China. And people are still trying to figure out where we go with COVID. What, what do you see as the path forward? I think, as uh, we had predicted a year ago, so it looks like the virus is here to stay. It's very difficult to eradicate a virus that it is all over the world and that uh, when you are infected, uh, three months later you can get reinfected again. Uh, so the virus will continue being with us, but I think we'll uh, move into a situation like flu. I don't think there will be any social distancing measures anymore. And I think people will be getting their boosters, although not at the numbers that they used to take the boosters in the beginning of the pandemic, and uh, the waves will be coming, and we will live with it. And we're just going to get a booster every year? I think that's uh, what the most likely scenario. So China's going through a pretty acute wave right now. What, what, what is the status of getting Paxlovid, your treatment, to the Chinese citizens? Since December that uh, the Chinese authorities uh, expressed an interest for Paxlovid, we have sent uh, a few millions of uh, of treatments over there. That's not and they are this, uh, You are right, but we are sending as much as we have right now, and they are uh, immediately distributed. They are? Yes. And you're, and you're sending more. Do you have any sense of, of how many people are being infected and using this treatment? No, I do not. Because that's been a, bit, a sort of a question mark, the experiment there. Yes. And why are they buying Paxlovid and not your vaccines? Look, everybody has his own uh, health care priorities and uh, how they want to, to deal with the pandemic, and they have their own. Uh, apparently, they have their own vaccines. They rely on Chinese vaccines. Uh, and as far as I know, they didn't ask for Western vaccines, but they did ask for treatments from the West. So there's no discussion right now f with you and, and ch the Chinese government about that? Not with us. Not, not currently at the moment. What about um, the status of the, the booster in the U.S.? There's been a CFTC and FDA investigation into safety, potential safety issues surrounding stroke for elderly people who have gotten the booster. What, what do you know about that? No, I think what the CDC said was that uh, they saw a signal in one small database, and as a result, they triggered a very comprehensive review of all databases in existence, and they discovered nothing. So then, just, but just for transparency, just as we had seen a signal, we, we tested, we found nothing. The same is with us. Uh, we were alerted that they found that. We'll do it. our own investigation in all databases in Europe, Israel, and the U.S., and we found in none of them anything. None of them. So none are, are them. you continuing anything. to look into safety issues? People wonder if it makes me people more vulnerable to cardiac arrest. You, you've, arrest you've, you've seen all the, you know, some conspiracies and some... You know, valid. Yeah, irrelevant from conspiracy or not, we have a team that constantly does this. They are collaborating with major scientific institutions, and they are doing with them and alone ourselves digging into databases. And we constantly review and analyze data. We have seen not a single signal, although we have distributed billions of doses. When it comes to working on boosters every year, how how do you know which strain you're targeting at this you point? You know, every time a strain comes up. We treat it like if it would be a suspicious strain, and we start working on it to see if it will uh, uh, overcome the protection of the vaccine. Once we discover that there is a possibility, immediately we develop a kind of a vaccine just in case the authorities will ask us to do it. It is not our job, uh, other than discussing with the authorities, but eventually it is CDC, it's FDA, it's EMA in Europe, and other authorities that, looking at the data, we'll see we want you to make a vaccine that looks like that. And then we will make it. And in order to avoid losing time, we start always for every single virus mm -hmm. to prepare doing that. So currently, what, are you working on the next? For, for example, currently we know that the one that is worrisome, it is the one that originated in the Easter Coast, New York, and is now spreading in the U.S. It is the B1.5. So in case that will become an issue, we are working on it. So in case that will become an issue, as I said, and authorities will ask us to do something about it, we will not lose time. What about pricing? What, what is it going to cost in 2023? It's, as you know, vaccines are completely free for all Americans. Now, but in the U.S.? The U.S. is going to be completely free for all Americans. All Americans will receive it with zero copay because this is what... Uh, but what about charging services. the government? There, there are reports here Only that we had 100 per dose. The price 110 with 130 will be the least price. And it is the price that uh, will go when you go to commercial. And this is the low end 
of all the vaccines of this category. Wanted to also ask you about the RSV vaccine because there was some news last night from Moderna. They, they released their data, very strong efficacy data. Is it apples to apples with the data that you have released around your candidate? I saw that I saw the announcement. The congratulations to Moderna. Good news because we need to have options for all these uh, nasty diseases like RSV. You can make the, the comparisons between clinical trials that they are not uh, directly, but they look that the efficacy is on the same. Uh, range that we have announced. They announced 83, we announced 86. So it's more or less the same. Uh, I haven't seen the safety profile yet in detail, where I'm sure that they will uh, uh, f uh, produce all this data pretty soon. What is the timeline for getting that approved? I don't know about them. Uh, for you, uh, for you. Ah, for us, we submitted. So we are going to get it in uh, whenever FDA will provide us approval. We have priority review because we had a very strong data set and uh, the disease doesn't have any vaccine right now. And is it, what, what about for young children, babies who are especially vulnerable for RSV? Yeah, that's the, the big innovation here. We have uh, the first maternal vaccine. We are vaccinating the mother and uh, the mother is passing antibodies through the fetus. So when the baby is born, it's born already with antibodies and it's protected the first six months of its life. Is, is it going to be like COVID where we could see yours and Moderna's vaccines get approved? Oh, yes. Like I I'm, sure that, uh, I'm sure if Moderna's uh, data are like, I'm sure, first of all, you are never sure, but I be, expect that we will be approved. I expect GSK will be approved, and I expect if the Moderna's data are the same, will it be approved. What is next in your, in your pipeline for vaccines? Now that oh, we are launching innovation. in the next uh, 18 months 19 products, 19 new products. I don't think ever a company was able to uh, manage 19 launches in 18 months. Uh, five of these 19 are vaccines. Uh, flu yeah. is one of them. The RSV we discussed, uh, meningococcal uh, vaccine, pentavalent. And then after the next 18 months, so 24, 25, uh, we have uh, the singles disease. Uh, we have uh, combinations between COVID and flu, COVID, flu, RSV, all of that, that we are going to work. And, uh, of course, we have Lyme disease. Lyme disease, vaccine for Lyme disease, very big deal. Very big deal, especially oh, yes. in the Northeast. Oh, yes. So do you think Wall Street appreciates your story? There have been a few downgrades lately, questions about a COVID reset and, and where to unlock value next from this company. Yes, I think they hear, I think, what we told the people that how COVID situation will look like in this year. This year will be a transitional year. Transition means that we are going to move from uh, governmental business to commercial business. When this happens, uh, there are two things that needs to uh, to, to occur. One, it is that the stocks needs to be absorbed by the government both. And uh, so a lot of the things that have been sold in 22 will be used in 23. The utilization of the vaccine in year 23, we expect will be the same like in 22 and will be the same like in 24. Which is what percent in the US? In the US, I would say that we have approximately 100 something million boosters doses were uh, utilized in 22, approximately. And uh, we expect it will be more or less the same. And, of course, we will have take a part. Moderna will take a part. What about all the cash flow from, from the vaccines and from your COVID business? Are you are you? We looking? are increasing our R&D. As you know, when I took over, the research budget of Pfizer was $7 billion. Uh, this year will be excess of 12. In 22, I mean. What about deals? Excess. What about M&A? M&A, we are, again, focusing on buying science and projects uh, and products that they are top-notch. We... We focused on migraine with the Nurtec, best in class, we think. Uh, uh, we went to sickle cell disease, the best in class product again. We went to ulcerative colitis, the best in class product. And we will continue doing that. You should see a lot of activity in uh, 2023. Biotech well, valuations have come down pretty significantly. They have come down, but uh, we are not looking for the cheap uh, things. We are looking for the good things. So yeah. for us, of course, we don't want to overpay. But the most important thing, it is to be certain that uh, the data are solid and that uh, this will be a breakthrough medical uh, uh, solution. Uh, once you have that, you, can all go, you cannot go wrong. Albert, thank you so much for the time. Thank uh, you very much, sir. No shortage of news to discuss with you. Albert Borla, CEO of Pfizer.